Hey there, Glazy people. It is Carmen here with Mako, and today we are going to review the glaze profile for our stoneware glaze, Birch. Birch is a creamy, off-white colored glaze that breaks well over texture. It has a glossy finish and is stable in performance, but can add mobility if it's applied heavily or in certain combinations. Starting out, we're going to go ahead and showcase some application with birch and then we'll review our tiles. So starting out, we've got our pint of glaze here. As always, we have our stone or our cone six stoneware sample on a white clay body featured on the label. On the side here, you can see the dinnerware safe logo, which means it's both food and dinnerware safe. Always remember to keep track of your lot number in case you need to contact our technical team. And then we have general cone six and 10 results, basic application instructions. So make sure you check out that label uh, when you're using our products. We'll go ahead and apply the glaze here. So we've got our tile. I'm just gonna do the same application that I've done on these tiles here. So one, two, three coats, and then three coats on the back. I like to use our uh, RB144 number four fan. This is a great natural fiber fan brush that plumps up really well when you're loading it with glaze. If you tend to be light-handed or covering up a large surface, we, kind of, we would recommend to use our, our, our RB140 number eight soft fan. This one is a little bit larger than the number four fan, will plump up a little bit easier, so it's great if you naturally tend to have a light hand, it'll give you a little bit of help, in addition to the fact that it helps just cover larger surfaces since it's holding more glaze. Since we're just doing a tile today, I'm just gonna go ahead and use our number four fan. I like to give the glaze a good stir with my brush and that really helps plump up the brush to make sure I'm applying enough glaze here. So I'll go ahead and put my first coat on, working it into that texture, making sure it's going on nice and smooth. I don't want my br brush dragging or anything. Then the first coat on the back here, again, a nice plump brush. Perfect, so we've got one coat applied on here. It's taken a little bit to dry still, that's perfect. That's how you know you have a nice thick application. So starting out, let's check out what a typical cone six firing with birch looks like. Here we have applied one, two, and three coats. As you can see, this creamy white color builds up as more coats are added. With a thinner application, you'll kind of get a darker colored uh, breaking. It can be kind of this like light brown sort of color, um, but it will break really well over texture. And then on the back here, we have just three coats on the whole thing. So you can see a nice, creamy white finish with uh, a gloss gloss finish here. And we'll see how that compares to our cone five firing. So if you check out the same application with a cone five firing, uh, it doesn't look that different, honestly. The color seems to look a little bit lighter, I think, but you still get that nice gloss finish and some beautiful breaking over texture. So it's not too different between cone six and cone five. Again here, the differences are really subtle, but they definitely are there. Luckily, you still get a nice finish uh, with either temperature. All right, and it looks like we're ready for our second coat. This is nice and dry to the touch. There's a little bit of gloss in the texture, but that's all right, because we know the glaze is thicker there. Go ahead and get our second coat on. Really lay that glaze on there. And then our second coat on the back. So that's two coats.
Now let's see how the glaze looks at cone 10. Here we have our cone 10 reduction results. This is three coats, so I'll go ahead and compare cone six three coats with cone 10 three coats. The glaze definitely gets a bit darker, but it still showcases that nice breaking and the breaking gets darker as well. We still have a glossy finish and it doesn't get very mobile at cone 10 still. It's still pretty, pretty stable, which is really nice to have the glaze remain stable when you're bringing it up to a higher temperature. And then we'll compare our flux results. So starting out, we have cone six. Here is uh, two coats of flux under birch. So here's light flux, here's dark flux underneath three coats of birch and fired to cone six. We have a bit of mobility. This glaze works really nice layering, adding some mobility, but not too much. It's just enough. You can see here the light flux is a little bit more mobile than the dark flux, which is very typical for these products. On the back here, we have two coats of flux over birch. So you can see there's a little bit less interaction than there was here. You can see this is sort of, it blends in with the flux a little bit more. This kind of showcases the flux without the little layer of birch over it, which kind of makes a lot of sense, obviously. But it does interact with it a little bit, but just not quite as much as it does when it's underneath the, the birch. And then here we have it at cone 10 also over. So both of these have two coats of flux applied over three coats of birch. It remains very mobile at uh, cone 10 still, but again, not, not running off the piece, which is awesome, even with the flux. I love the beautiful striations that show up here with the flux in these interactions. It's really, really pretty with that nice uh, little burnt finish there. It's really good. It's got a good reduction on here. You can see how much the clay body changed um, in this reduction. Check out our tile here. Looks like it could still dry a little bit. So please note, it's just taken a couple minutes for that to dry. And then here we have our alternative clay bodies. This is one of my favorites here. We have it on Brown Bear. And this breaking over the brown bear brings out some gorgeous blue colors with this glaze, which is super, super awesome. I love this finish here. Here we have it on a speckled brown clay. I believe this was a Kentucky Mudwork speckled turtle. These specks come through a little bit and that brown breaking is emphasized here with that darker body. And then here we have it on a speckled white clay, still get the beautiful breaking and some nice uh, striations from those speckles coming through. So this glaze plays really nice with different clay bodies. I have had it have some surface issues on different dark brown clays, so make sure to do some testing. But typically, if you do run into any issues, we recommend to do a hold or a drop hold, and that tends to alleviate pinholing or general surface issues that come up when you're using different clays. So we'll just let this keep drying. We'll go over our combos and then we'll do our final coat here. Here is birch in combination with some other glazes. Um, here we have it with tiger's eye. So when we do our glaze combinations, we apply two coats of each glaze. First, we applied two coats of birch and then we applied two coats of tiger's eye on top of that. I have a pretty heavy hand, so you can see that this glaze really did move down. I stopped my tiger's eye right here. So this combination did end up having mobility. And I think that's just because I really laid it on there and I did four or a total of four coats and they were on pretty heavy. Generally, both birch and tiger's eye are stable on their own, but in combination, when they're applied heavily, they can add mobility. Those glazes that break really well over texture, those are the ones that will perform this way. So if it breaks over texture, you can make it be mobile with a heavy application and layering it with other glazes that are mobile in that way. So the combo here is pretty subtle, but I really, really like these beautiful grays and browns that come through with the uh, birch and tiger's eye.
And then here we have birch and uh, muddy waters. So first two coats of birch, second two coats of muddy waters. This muddy waters was pretty heavy. Uh, it had a heavy crystal concentration. So that's uh, kind of this mobility that happened here. Again, I only applied it to here. So we did have a lot of mobility. This is mostly because there's a lot of crystals and I'm really heavy handed. So luckily, we put these on a brick and use kiln wash on our shelves. If you haven't yet, feel free to check out Mako's kiln wash. We have available in pints as well as three gallon buckets. It's really, really great for instances such as these. And then here we have two coats of celadon bloom over two coats of birch. So again, a nice subtle combination, but it brings some beautiful variation onto this piece here. Again, I lathered it on. We almost went over the edge here, but luckily this lip saved us. Good design on that cup. All right, and then finally, we'll do our last coat to showcase uh, this application on a tile. Making sure my brush is nice and plumped up. And then on the back here. And that's three coats. So you can see, I really like to lay it on there. I never have any resistance or pulling from my brush, making sure I'm building up enough material to have this beautiful, nice, glossy, opaque finish that showcases itself when you're using birch. All right, I think that's all that I have prepared today for Birch. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments, please. And if you haven't yet, and you liked these combos with, with Birch, definitely check out the Glaze Combo Gallery on our website. It is totally searchable by glaze, by firing temperature, so it's a really, really useful resource to have. Thanks again for your time today, guys, and as always, make it make up.